Before we begin today, I just want to talk for a moment about watercolour paper, which many of you have been asking about. I use a paper which is quite thick and it's called Bockingford. Bockingford watercolour paper, it's £140 weight. That simply means that the thickness of the paper, when the manufacturer make it, they make a ream of 144 sheets and that would weigh £140. Hence, each piece is labelled as such. You may see um, in the shops that the paper will say CP, which means cold press. And cold press gives it a fine grain or a slight texture to the paper. You may be able to see it with the colour here. It'll also say not, N-O-T, which basically means that it's not hot pressed, which is smooth paper. It is a cold press, CP, and it's made from cotton. I really like this paper and I use it in all, in all my lessons, my workshops in school, my workshops for adults. Bockingford watercolour paper. Let's begin then and look at a few of the colours, shall we? I've made today a dark brown colour. This is actually a burnt sienna, but you could use sepia and chocolate brown. I've used a yellow ochre, again you could use yellow ochre or raw sienna, Just like a very very light golden brown, a light green which is lots of yellow and a touch of blue, a dark green, now I make this dark green using yellow and then I put into the yellow some Payne's Grey, which is the dark black looking colour. But it does have blue in it, so that will turn the yellow into a dark green. It's a really useful colour to have. Here's the Payne's Grey on its own. Just like a grey, a warm grey colour. And I have some cerulean blue here. I really like this. It's a very light colour. Cerulean blue. I will put all the colours in the description below. And I've made another green here, but I put, started with yellow, and then into the yellow I put quite a lot of this cer uh, cerulean blue into yellow to make this shade of green. So we're ready now for our summer view through a gate in Devon. Let's begin with a very basic sketch then, shall we? I'll make this a little bit darker for you to see. And you can make your sketch a little lighter. I'm going to start about here on my paper and I'm going to draw a gentle hillside. Now, below that, I have a pencil line which represents the edge of the sea or the estuary. We're looking through to the sea in Devon. Now just below that I'm going to make a line here which is going to be slightly undulating. It's got little spikes so, if, so it doesn't have to be done with a ruler. Just take that line across. There we go. Now you may be wondering why have I left such a big space here? Well, we can make that a little bit smaller, but all that's going to be, we're going to have a lot of trees here. So I might just give the suggestion of where the canopy of the trees is coming to go, going to go. So I have a lovely canopy there, and we may have a canopy of trees here. Coming down, another line here because 
I'm going to make this area the distant water and I'm going to make this area into a distant field. That's my plan anyway. Now let's have another line here and this central area is going to be beautiful wheat field. Here I'm making a gate so I'm doing one one post for the gate and then carry that on. Second post for the gate into the farmer's field. Now want a little bit of perspective on this gate so let's take that line here slightly on an angle we won't make it right up to the post and we'll make this on an angle it's as though the gate was opening inwards Let's begin then with some painting, shall we? We've got the basic sketch in there. There'll be a lot more details that will be added as we go along. So I'm taking some of the cerulean blue here. And I'm just spreading that gently in the sky from side to side. Do not worry if you go over your pencil line, particularly here, doesn't matter. Adding a touch of water to my brush now, a little bit of water here, so I can make the colour a little bit lighter. Blend it across, it's like a windscreen wiper, wiping across my painting. Don't worry if you come down into the hills, that does not matter. We'll paint over that again later. And what I could do, I could take, I have a little tiny amount of colour left here, the cerulean blue. Maybe I'll make the top part of the sky a little darker. Let's see what happens. See if it works. Oh yeah, that's looking good. A little bit darker. It just gives a little bit more of contrast to the sky. No clouds in this sky today. But we will need some of that cerulean blue in this area here, because this is going to be the distant water as well. So let's put some blue in there. If you want that to be a little bit lighter, take a piece of tissue, a tiny piece of tissue paper. If you want it lighter, lift a little bit out, just making that to a more pale, pale, pale light blue. Okay, now the area here is going to be a beautiful wheat field. So I'm choosing to use the yellow ochre on this. It's a bright summer field. Right over the gate, don't worry about that because we'll be painting the gate with a darker colour. A little bit of water on my brush here, it's just making it a little bit lighter. If you want it even lighter still, again, take some tissue, just take a little bit off. Just taking a small amount off there. Going to bring some of this colour also into the foreground here. I 
And if you find here and there, there are little flecks of white, I quite like that. Quite like that effect. Swapping over to a smaller brush here, this is a number two. You could use a number two or a number three, and these brushes are a number, a number six brush going to a fine point. I think I'm going to put some of the distant hills in now here. I can see that it's dried, so it's not shining. So it could dry. So this is a tiny area of distant field. Do you remember I spoke about some of the green that I made with? This was made with yellow and the cerulean blue. And I like the way that some of the blue that I already put on is coming through as well. It will do, you'll see in a moment. Added a little bit of water to my brush. Now you can see that blue, the sky, where I came over. Can you see it showing through here, giving them a, a natural shade? Now, as I said before, my pencil is rather strong for you to see, but you could be a little bit more delicate with your pencil. I always say, let the painting have a little bit of its own way. I'm going to take some of this green as well. I'm going to put a little bit here. I'm going to put a little bit of the raw sienna and yellow ochre. Because maybe these are distant fields far away, which will literally come into view as I start to finish the painting more. You'll see the painting evolve. At the moment it looks rather patchy. Okay. I'm going to introduce, while this dries here, I'm going to introduce some shades of green. I'm going to use light green and dark green for the beautiful canopy of summer trees. Let's start with some light green first. This was made with Academium Yellow and a touch of blue. Let's just put that in. I'm al almost just dabbing the brush on. I'm being quite generous with the colour because I don't want it to dry before I put some of the dark colour in there. Let's put some on this side. coming down to the top of the wheat field. But I've got a plan for that wheat field, where the wheat field meets the distance here. Got a little plan for that. Now I'm going to introduce some of the dark green. Cadmium yellow and Payne's gray. And I'm going to sort of, again, touch, just touching, letting the paint run its own way a little bit, a little bit of its own character.
Now here, if I slightly bring the colour with the tip of my brush and bring in the colour into the wheat field so that the illusion is that the wheat field does not have a straight edge it's as though the field itself the actual shape of the wheat is making a sort of a wiggly edge shall we call it. Oh yes, I'm liking that. Remember everyone, all painting is an illusion. It's all an illusion, isn't it? We're just creating darks and lights. Let's put a little bit of the dark on this side and I'm even going darker. Wow, I like that. It's almost black. It's a summer, a summer tree. And it's got this darkness and shadow to it. So it's like I'm creating random dots and dashes, but letting them slightly blend into each other. So you get this full canopy. Wow, yes, I'm liking this. Now, swapping over to my small brush again, and going to take the dark colour and a little bit from the centre even, and I'm going to continue on here. And I'm making it a little bit spiky. Up and down, up and down. So this is dark foliage on the edge of the wheat field. Blended into this here. In the very, very far distance, using the tip of the brush, there may be some trees. Now these trees are actually huge in the distance, but they appear to be quite small from our perspective. What about if I was to suggest a few fields Put a line on an angle and we can just give again the illusion of some distant fields. Just take your time. How beautiful is that? I'd like to put some trees a little bit closer to me on this edge of the lake here or this edge of the water the estuary in Devon how fine can you be with the tip of the brush the base of the trees is quite almost straight but the top of the trees are undulating where the can appears. Shall we have a little field? Hedgerow in this field. So it's a line on an angle. Maybe that has a little coppice of trees there. So we're getting this sensation of distance, that's the plan. Am I brave enough to go a little bit darker here? Well, I'm taking some of the stronger Payne's Grey on my brush. and I'm simply going to dab in a few curved suggestions of the top of the trees. So here, maybe these trees are in front of those trees. I think I need a little more Payne's Grey. 
But let's take a little bit more of that. It's very strong, so I don't need very much. I'm going to use that almost right from the pure colour and dabbing it on where the green is still damp making the suggestion of darker and lighter shades within the canopy of the tree. I'm giving myself a little bit of encouragement. Come on, Hugh, that's looking really good. Got to keep in that right brain mode, haven't I? You know the right brain is a good place to be. It's a happy place. It does not judge. It does not count time. So right brain is a great therapeutic mindfulness place to be. And I try to get into right brain as much as I can. It's not easy and it's not easy to stay there because life, life can be quite difficult, whether you're a younger person or whether you're an older person. We all have our problems and our difficulties in life. But I find painting really does help me to deal with those difficulties. Okay, loving this, loving this sensation of the summer canopy in the county of Devon in England. So I'm going to now swap back to my smaller brush, take some of the yellow ochre again, and this time think what I might do. I've got a colour here I'm going to introduce to you. It's called light red. It isn't red in the sense of a bright red. It's more of an earth, earth colour. It's a terracotta. Do buy yourself one. Light red. Terracotta. You only need a touch. It'll last you for a long, long time. And if I was to introduce a little touch of this light red into the yellow ochre, it'll just warm, make it warmer and a little deeper in colour and we'll have some of the stalks of the wheat field now. Let's try that, shall we? Shall we see how that is? Oh yeah, that's great. And all I'm going to do is basically just painting upwards and Enjoying it, just painting up, moving the brush down and making, almost making stripes really, stripes of colour. Hey, I'm picking up a little bit of the green around here, but that looks good. And to carry on to this side here, just flicking up. so that we have a suggestion of the individual stalks or stems on the wheat field. I'm using here my left hand. I am a right-handed person. But if you sometimes try and use the opposite hand to what you usually use. It becomes a little bit more, a little bit more random, not as perfect. And there are occasions with our painting that that's what we want. We don't want it to look absolutely perfect. We want it a little bit random. So you can take as much time as you wish creating these stalks in the wheat field. It's making me think of that song by the police, Fields of Barley, Sting. So 
So I'm trying to get more and more texture to my field. But I'm being quite delicate with the application. Swapping back to my right hand now. In this area here, sweeping round towards the gate, because this is the, this is the pathway, this is the walk that we take, our mindfulness walk towards the sea. So if I was to introduce a tiny touch of a lighter green and if I was to paint that in I'm going to dab that out a little bit in a moment but it's just to give the illusion of maybe a sweeping pathway let's take a little bit of tissue make that a little bit lighter Don't want to be too heavy with this. Put a little bit of that turquoisey green in there. And so the pathway may come round here and it might come through the gate. So we may have a little bit there. I'm going to introduce some other green here. Pulling it in from the corners, pulling the colour into the Painting below the gate. Pull some colour in here. And you can allow a little bit of the uh, painting to have a little bit of its own way. You know, like this light area here. Going to flick up again. and Taking a little bit of the darker colour and maybe with the tip of my brush we'll have some darker green grasses flicking up into the field. And even in the very foreground, there might be some grasses. Just... Oh, I'd love to be here today. In this beautiful, sunlit painting. Do you have a few grasses here? Just the tip of the brush. I'm not pressing very hard, just very gently. I think it's time to paint the gate, don't you? Swapping over to my small brush, moving around the colours, mix them around because the colour sinks to the bottom of the palette. So I'm mixing that around, holding the brush rather like a felt tip pen. And I'm going to begin to paint the gate in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, this gate has been here for many, many years. See many visitors. What about a little bit of shadow from this gate post here? Maybe there's a, just a little bit of shadow comes onto the pathway there. I wonder who was the last visitor. They've left the gate open. So I'm literally just filling in here. I hope you will enjoy this painting as much as I'm enjoying it.
made that a little bit darker there. So we have a little bit of shadow here from the gate maybe. Wow, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm going a little bit darker, I'm mixing here in my palette a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the Payne's grey, making it a little bit darker. But you know, when you come to paint this yourself, add a little bit of your own character and your own feeling to it. Maybe you would like the gate to be closed. Entirely up to you. I think we're ready for Les Touches Finales. Les Touches Finales, the final touch. And the final touch is going to be perhaps a gentle, wire fence here. Let's see. I'm taking some of the burnt umber, wiping my brush a little bit to a point. So we don't need it to be absolutely perfect. So maybe there's a touch of wire here. And a little touch of wire here. It's just to keep the cattle in. That will do. Let's do the same on the other side. Wipe my brush a little bit. I don't want too, too much. You can practice this. If you're a little bit nervous about doing the wire, could you use your pencil first? Do it in pencil and then go over it. So, just don't overthink it. Go for it, but don't press hard. I'm hardly touching the paper hardly touching, just making it very fine, very fine line. Well, a few little touches here and there and it really will be finished. I really didn't think I was going to enjoy this painting as much as I have enjoyed it. <laughs> but that's the beauty of painting, isn't it? And I have done this painting, oh, six or seven times. Please don't expect it to be perfect on your very first attempt, you know? You may have to like any, like any subject, one has to practice. I'm going to stand up. I'm just standing back from my painting. Wow. I would like to finally just make the gate a little bit darker, particularly here. It's going to make it a little darker so that it, it appears to be more in shadow and we get the sensation of the sunlight. I hope you're enjoying these classes that I'm putting on for you on YouTube. Please spread the word so that more and more people can see what I do. If you want to come and join me in a class, I have some classes in Lancashire in a place called Clitheroe and Worley. Have a look on my website www.qtemplton.co.uk or if you have an art group somewhere around the country, you want to invite me to come and teach you some of my skills just give me a call. Okay, now, as I always say on every single painting that I create, I would leave this to dry overnight. 
before I take the tape off. But for the sake of you, the viewer, seeing the finished article, very gently taking the tape off away from the painting on an angle. And we'll see how our view looks. I'm really pleased with that. I'm also going to share with you, I've, I've done this painting, this one is, is in landscape style, but I have also done the painting in a portrait style as well, which I think also looks really good. If you wanted to do it in portrait style, you could do it in portrait as well. So all that's left to do on this one, which I haven't done for a long time, is to sign my work. I'm going to use a fine liner pen. Usually I would use a pencil, but I think I'll use a black fine liner pen for you to see H. Templeton. So, happy painting everybody.